So I have put the link on uh, WhatsApp also. So we just see WhatsApp <coughs> and then come to the class. So if two people have any question regarding last lecture. क्या हाल है सर्दी के आपके इलाकों में शाहजेब शाहजेब हमीद 84 जी सर 85 क्या हाल है ठीक ठाक सर आप सुनाएं अल्हम्दुलिल्लाह कोई गप्पे नहीं लगा रहा मुझसे तो मैं क्या करूं हैं क्या हाल है मौसम की सर्दी के बस ठीक ही है इतनी ज्यादा सर्दी भी नहीं है कौन सा शहर है हसनपुर है बहावलपुर का हासिलपुर भावलपुर के आसपास जी तो फॉग के क्या हालात नहीं अच्छा है फॉग का तो कोई नहीं है सीन फॉग नहीं है नहीं नहीं सर धूप निकली हुई है गुड 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 जी सर स्टूडेंट की पढ़ाई से अलावा भी मसरूफियत होती है सर कजन की शादी थी तो उसमें मसरूफ जरा जी चलो मोहसिन राणा जी मोहसिन राणा जी सर जी सर क्या हाल है आपके अल्हम्दुलिल्लाह सर आप सुनाएं ये देखो खुशबाश बैठा हुआ है माशाल्लाह से हंसते हुए हैं देखो शाहजेब जो है वो शादी में बिजी है आप ही बता दो हमने क्या पढ़ा था लास्ट टाइम सर ये कि वो प्रेसिपिटेशन कैसे फाइंड करते हैं अगर किसी स्टेशन की मिसिंग प्रेसिपिटेशन हो उसको कैसे फाइंड करना है उसके अलावा वो स्नो गेजेस के के जरिए प्रेसिपिटेशन कैसे फाइंड करते हैं तो ये आइसो हाइटलोटिसन पॉलीगन का थोड़ा सा ओवरव्यू सही कह रहे हैं सही सही ठीक कह रहे हैं सर इतना ही पता है बाकी वो कंप्लीट लेक्चर जो डिटेल था वो नहीं था नहीं इतना ही पता है कि हाउ टू calculate the missing precipitation and we have covered this topic that's fine sir iske bare mein iske do method the wo ek to average simple thi aur dusra normal normal ratio ji aur uske baad wo uski ratio check karte the ki kaun sa method suitable hai wo par 10 plus minus 10% pe bilkul sahi hai to kafi kuch yani tumhare memory mein reh gaya hai to और किसको बुलाऊं तुम्हारे किस दोस्त को बुलाऊं मोहसिन राणा उसको मर्जी बुला लें सर अगर जिसको मैंने रेफर किया वो बाद में मुझे अच्छा हमजा नियाज <laughs> तो मैं कौन सा यहां डंडे मार रहा हूं यार क्या हाल है क्या कर रही हो मैं क्या सुनाऊं सुनाने के लिए तुम्हारी उम्र है ये अभी ये मोहसिन बता रहा था कि वी हैव स्टडीड मेथड्स ऑफ मिसिंग प्रेसिपिटेशन तो हम दो मेथड्स की जरूरत क्यों पड़ी हमें व्हाई डू वी नीड टू मेथड्स एक
we normalize them with respect to their normal precipitation normalize matlab hai we divide their precipitation of the missing day with the their normal annual precipitation and then we multiply it with the normal annual precipitation of the station for which we want to calculate theek hai so that we use when we have a lot of difference of normal annual precipitation of the index station surrounding the station of the index station with respect to the station of our interest station for which <coughs> we want to find the missing data theek hai ye if there is lot of difference of the normal annual precipitation then simple arithmetic mean should not be taken kya ho jayega if we take simple arithmetic mean it will give us an answer anyhow it will give us an answer but we are taking the average using a station for which we know normal annual precipitation is much much different from the normal annual precipitation of my station Got it. अगर हमें ये पता है कि फलाना स्टेशन जो है इफ दस पर्टिकुलर स्टेशन इज मच मच डिफरेंट विद रिस्पेक्ट टू नॉर्मल एनवल प्रेसिपिटेशन विद द स्टेशन फॉर विच आई एम वर्किंग नाउ देन आई शुड नॉट टेक इट सिंपली एवरेज विल बी देन द रिजल्ट विल बी रिजल्ट विल बी मिस लीडिंग देर विल बी अ रिजल्ट देर विल बी अ वैल्यू but we should uh, conceptually we should understand that that would not be a better representative value so for better representative value we divide that station if we don't have other station then if we have to use the station with the high variation we will be dividing that by the normal annual precipitation or multiplying it with the normal annual precipitation of the station under question so we will be uh, multiplying it with a, let us say a weighing factor ratio of the nap's that's good 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 thank you shahzeb shahzeb tha kaun hamza thank you then one question from girl student who is volunteer i cannot find the girl's name ami bish amis amis bashir chakki pali <coughs> any girl student unmute your mic freeha nisar hopefully girl student freeha nisar 25 busy in breakfast Yes, sir. So, how are you? I'm fine, sir. Fine, sir. So last time we studied, uh, one of the students have told me we have studied. क्या पढ़ा था? Different method to calculate the average precipitation of an area. Sir, actually, I was last time absent. थी इसलिए मैं lecture नहीं सुना अभी. So that is not an excuse. If you were absent, you should have gone through it. सर वो एक्चुअली बहुत बिजी वीक था तो ओह माय गॉड सारे बिजी थे आप नहीं कजन की शादी है नहीं कजन की शादी नहीं थी बहुत क्लोज हो गई थी इसलिए चलिए ऐसा होना नहीं चाहिए कि यू शुड नॉट बी रेडी लास्ट लेक्चर इफ यू हैव यू आर एब्सेंट इवन देन यू शुड बी रेडी फॉर द आंसर्स यू हैव टू प्रिपेयर इट योरसेल्फ देन सी आर यस सर क्या हाल है मुद्दत से बात नहीं हुई तुमसे सर ठीक हूं अल्हम्दुलिल्लाह ये फरीहा की मुझे बताओ कि कितनी एब्सेंट है सर वो एक्सेल शीट पे भी सारी अटेंडेंस आई थिंक अपलोड नहीं की फरीहा व्हाट इज योर रोल नंबर 61 मुई नवेस बैठा हुआ है मैं नहीं बात करता मुई से है 
मैंने कहा मैं नहीं बात करता कहता यस सर क्या हाल है आपके ठीक सर ठीक हो थ्री मेथड्स आप कैलकुलेटिंग द एवरेज प्रेसिपिटेशन हाफ एन एरिया मीन प्रेसिपिटेशन ठीक है तो थ्री ऑटोमेटिक ऑटोमेटिक मीन थीसन पॉली थीसन पॉलीगन और आइसोहाइड्रल मेथड एवरेज प्रेसिपिटेशन ठीक है ठीक है बिल्कुल सही है इफ आई गिव यू अ रीजन यस सर एंड if there is only one station over there then how you Sorry? calculate what? if there is only one station over there okay then how you will calculate the mean precipitation of that region sir uh, i think so thiessen polygon method would be uh, preferred you know sir uh, नो सर रिक्वायर्ड नहीं है उसका एरिया जो गिवन उसका जो एरिया जो वही उसको हम यूज कर सकते हैं पॉलीगन बनाने के फिर क्यों कह रहे हो थीज एंड पॉलीगन मेथड विल बी मोस्ट सूटेबल क्या ख्याल है ये सर वो अर्थमेटिक अर्थमेटिक मीन से भी हो सकता है Do you think I have to calculate mean if there is only one station? No, sir. Required to not have mean. We can't. Shahzade, कुछ चीजें इतनी simple होती हैं कि we don't have to go further. एक station है, we don't have to take means that simple that station. Simple होता है क्या? That station value will be representative of that area. Okay. ठीक है ठीक है सर ओके एक और सवाल सिमिलरली तो मुझे जरा इंटेलेक्चुअल से लगते हो तुम्हारे दोस्त मुझे माफ कर दें अगर मैंने कोई गलत किया तो एक इफ यू हैव अ कैचमेंट एरिया सर वो तो बल्कि खुश होंगे कि मैं इससे सवाल हो रहा हूं उनसे नहीं हो रहा <laughs> सवाल क्या नहीं है डिस्कशन है गपशप भी समझो परेशान नहीं हो ठीक ठीक हो गया नो प्रॉब्लम एंड द सेकंड थिंग प्लीज ट्राई टू टेक पार्ट इन सच डिस्कशन रीजन इज व्हेन यू विल बी सिटिंग इन फ्रंट ऑफ एन इंटरव्यू पैनल यू हैव टू आंसर ओवर देयर वहां पे इवन इफ यू हैव वेरी हाई जीपीए ऑन योर शीट्स ऑन योर ट्रांसक्रिप्ट्स इफ यू आर नॉट एबल टू रिप्लाई ओवर देयर इफ यू आर नॉट एबल टू रिप्लाई कॉन्फिडेंटली ओवर देयर तो वहां पे अगर आप बोल नहीं सकोगे तो देन इट विल बी they will be saying no he cannot represent the reason for that is they are selecting officers who have to lead a group of people over there when you will be graduating from uet you will be uh, you will be uh, trying you will be trying to get into the service at officers rank you will be leading a sub division or the sea level uh, works of engineering and there will be 30 40 50 <laughs> people you have to lead them so during interview they want to see if you can uh, be responsive in any condition even if it is very difficult condition you have to respond or uh, if you are uh, uh, explaining whatever is inside you in a proper way or not right or wrong is a separate thing if you are explaining or not so that we, we say that these are your communication skills so even if your communication skill on written english is very good and you have got very good gpa if you cannot express yourself there will be problem and we get such, such feedback from the field oh you it students are good maybe in technical mathematical skills but when they have to express themselves other schools other universities uh, outperform them so try to take part yourself in such activity discussion khud kiya karo 
हो सकता है मैं भी आपको गलत जवाब दे रहा हूँ बट आपका कॉन्फिडेंस लेवल टू एक्सप्रेस योर सेल्फ बेहतर हो मेरी जो ट्रेनिंग होने की हो चुकी है सो यू शुड बी यूजिंग दिस वन टू वन टॉक यू शुड बी यूजिंग दिस ग्रुप टॉक एक्टिविटी इन इन अ पॉजिटिव मैनर नंबरों शंबरों को छोड़ो वो जो हम लिख रहे होते हैं वो डराने के लिए लिख रहे होते हैं so that you can perform and if somebody uh, will not performing then maybe we can take action also but try to improve your uh, expressive skills also theek hai this is message to all of you so ab maine kya puchna tha aur baat ho rahi thi muin havas se kis se baat ho rahi thi yes sir muin se baat okay i was i am putting this question to all of you and you can raise your hands ये जो रेज हैंड की ऑप्शन है यू कैन यूज दिस रेज योर हैंड ऑप्शन टू आंसर इफ यू हैव अ कैचमेंट एंड यू आर सीइंग मी आई एम मेकिंग अ फिगर ऑफ कैचमेंट इफ यू हैव अ कैचमेंट एंड यू हैव टू थ्री स्टेशंस इनसाइड द कैचमेंट एंड यू हैव द टू थ्री स्टेशन आउटसाइड द बाउंड्री ऑफ द कैचमेंट बट वेरी क्लोज टू द कैचमेंट विल यू कंसीडर द नेबरिंग स्टेशन आल्सो फॉर टेकिंग द एवरेज ऑफ द रेनफॉल or you will only rely the, on the station which are inside the catchment so, so this is uh, usain muin ne bhi jawab diya yaar bahut sare hain inka so sabse pehle jiska hand raise hua hai to wo tha mere khayal mein ye uzair uzair shafiq and Un- unmute your mic uh, yes sir हाँ जी थैंक्स फॉर पहले तो मैं उनको भी yes. पहले तो मैं क्वेश्चन रिपीट करो ना सर uh, अगर हमारे पास एक कैचमेंट बाउंड्री है या एरिया है और कुछ स्टेशन जो है फॉर एग्जांपल दो दिन उसके कैचमेंट के अंदर हैं और दो दिन जो है वो है तो कैचमेंट के बाहर लेकिन वेरी क्लोज हैं तो क्या हम जो कैचमेंट के बाहर हैं उनको भी कंसिडर करेंगे फॉर एवरेज या नहीं जी सर कंसीडर करेंगे क्योंकि उनका भी इफेक्ट जो है वो आएगा क्योंकि उनकी जो एक्चुअली जो स्टेशन का इफेक्ट है वो ये नहीं कि जिधर स्टेशन लगा है सिर्फ उसी पॉइंट के ऊपर होगा उसकी एक जो है वो एक्सपेंड होता है इसकी एक उसकी भी बाउंड्री हो सकती है तो उसका कुछ ना कुछ जो इम्पेक्ट है वो जरूर हमारा कैचमेंट बाउंड्री में जाएगा तो उसका जितना हम अगर पोलीगान बना रहे हैं तो जो पोलीगान के एरिया उस कैचमेंट बाउंड्री के अंदर आ रहा है ना उसको हम कंसिडर करके तो उसको भी जो है एवरेज में इन्वॉल्व करेंगे so anybody who disagree with uzair naam kya hai uzair shafiq yes sir so anybody who disagree with him there are 14 uh, hand raised 15 hand raised anybody who disagree he should open his mic for me okay so we take uh, normally all the inventory he is right we will we should consider them because the boundary region within my catchment will be well represented by the neighboring neighboring uh, gauging station so we will be considering them and even if it is very far line uh, station when we will be making polygon so maybe its polygon the far line station polygon will not come into my catchment then i get <laughs> ignore it so those station which are close by uh, uh, close to the boundary of the catchment they should be considered even if they don't fall within the catchment effect of the precipitation is not uh, catchment boundary uh, uh, it does not see the catchment boundary it's a meteorological activity atmospheric activity and the catchment boundary is uh, the topographical boundary catchment boundary is decided by the Uh, elevation of the area not by the atmospheric consideration theek hai sahi hai chalo we go ahead towards our uh, next topic if you have any questions if my my discussion have raised any query you are welcome so i am going to start the lecture start reading start recording so again bismillahir rahmanir rahim uh, today is uh, first of december so many people will be getting today salary so it will be happy day for you and we are going to start today topic of uh, rainfall measurement will continue uh, we have already studied the method of rainfall measurement through the ground based stations 
while we are studying <coughs> this topic of uh, uh, precipitation measurement with the radars and uh, satellites, you should be knowing that uh, these radars and satellites are still in development phase. The importance of the ground-based station is still there. We have some uh, uh, very uh, prominent advantages of radar and satellites. Uh, for example, they can see a vast area uh, in a moment, and we can see the extent of clouds and extent of the storm activity, how much area is affected. But uh, how much rain is coming to the ground is still uh, under development phase. They give us an idea. Uh, we have to correlate it to the uh, ground-based measurements, and we have to correct the uh, readings of the radar station. Uh, after calibration with the ground-based station data. So uh, keeping in mind that the ground-based uh, station's value is still important, still uh, uh, necessary. So these are the latest development which are going through in the field of uh, rainfall measurement. Uh, people are using radars. Radars were, uh, I think, uh, as old. Radar is uh, ra radio. Uh, radio detection and ranging radar first RA is for radio out of the radio D is for detection A for and and R is for ranging so radio detection and ranging uh, originally developed uh, radars originally they were uh, used for military purpose in the uh, world war days they were used and they were uh, uh, the silent. Uh, uh, they, 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 they worked quite enormously in detecting the enemy's uh, planes in, in the, those uh, days. But while they were seeing the radar pictures or radar outputs, sometimes they see some uh, solid thing, some, 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 uh, some place they see the solid thing, which were actually not the enemy plane. So then, in the after the after the war, they have they have uh, considered that what are these things. So then they found that they are also uh, reflecting the waves from the meteorological phenomena like clouds, hailstorms, snow activity. So these uh, met meteorological phenomena were also uh, producing the reflectance of the electromagnetic waves which were generated by the radar. So then it was picked by the meteorological people that why not we should use the radar, although it was built for the military purpose, why not we should use the radar for meteorological uh, forecasting also, rainfall estimation also. So uh, in continuation of our uh, measurement of the rainfall, in which we have already studied the ground-based uh, measurement, and uh, you have been informed about the recording, non-recording rain gauges, uh, next step is you should be informed about measurement through the uh, within the atmospheric and uh, through the very far place uh, uh, station satellites. Satellites is uh, uh, an instrument or satellite is a body which is rotating around uh, which is rotating around uh, the planet. Kisi or body ke kisi rotate kario that we say that this is a satellite. So we have a, hu a huge number of satellites which are uh, circulating or which are rotating around our globe, our Earth, and they are giving us very valuable data, which you might have uh, used in your first-year lectures of remote sensing, second-year lecture of remote sensing and GIS in the subject of surveying. So uh, through the radar, what we can estimate uh, is how much is the precipitation that is a similar thing as we estimate uh, using the rain gauge also. Intensity of the precipitation, the rate of precipitation can also be uh, estimated. But more prominent thing we, we can estimate from the radar is the aerial extent of the precipitation. More prominent thing is aerial extent of the uh, precipitation, this one. Reason, because when we have installed a rain gauge, you know its diameter is 5 to 8 inch diameter catchment area. So actually that rain gauge is measuring uh, rain for that much uh, area. We, we assume that the surrounding area is having the similar rainfall. But when we see the image of a radar, when we see the output of the radar, so that is clearly telling me how 
much is the extent of the clouds from that uh, estimation that if so much is the extent of the cloud we can have the uh, idea that which were at what place will be the center of the storm heavy rainfall how the rainfall will be uh, uh, reducing as we go away from the center of the storm so aerial extent is well defined uh, by the radar measurement and by the satellite same is for the satellite measurement also extent of the area of the storm activity can be easily seen another very good uh, uh, information which we get from the uh, radar and uh, satellite is the movement of the rainstorm movement of the rainstorm if you have the if you have the uh, rain gauge is installed you have a network of the rain gauge is installed in a certain area so they are giving you the rainfall uh, for a certain time period uh, and uh, directly you cannot see in which direction storm is moving east to west west to east so that you have to observe the clouds so these uh, uh, radar the continuous imagery of the radar continuous imagery of the radar or continuous imagery of satellites they tell us uh, the uh, right direction or the correct direction of the of the storm uh, activity and we can predict how after how much period the storm will be reaching to a certain place of our interest so movement of the rain storm is another uh, prominent dis- difference uh, which we can uh, find from the r- radars and which we can find from the satellite images and the duration of precipitation can also be measured as we can measure from the recording rain gauges similarly we can um, uh, measure the duration of the precipitation from the uh, radars also so why this stone came if somebody left or somebody want to say something okay 82 2018 civil 82 yes sir uh, you have been logged in through your laptop and your, through your mobile also two login is there i see uh, sir ek meeting to cancel ho gayi thi meri fir dobara maine google chrome se login kiya okay wo bhi abhi aap login hi ho so i am i am removing that one acha nahi kar de aur dusra why you have to wait in the lobby while everybody else have joined directly without getting permission from me why you have to wait in the lobby sir wo mera ऐप अनइंस्टॉल हो गई हुई है तो मोबाइल रीसेट की वजह से तो इसलिए लॉबी में बैठा हुआ था ऐप अनइंस्टॉल हो गई है उससे क्या फर्क पड़ता है आप हमारे पहले मैंने आप ज्वाइन की थी ना हमारे सेक्शन में एडिट हो गए नहीं जी एडिट हूं सर फिर तो लॉबी में नहीं होना चाहिए ओके ओके so these are the uh, measurements uh, with respect to rainfall which can be done through the radar and some of these are uh, can be done through the through the ground based stations also uh, ground based station means uh, rain gauges uh, all the radars are also ground based and uh, but they measure the precipitation or the cloud activity in the in air they don't measure the rain directly at the ground uh, so here is the conceptual diagram Uh, which show how radar uh, uh, work and uh, you might have seen uh, a radar installed on the jail road at La- in lahore uh, usually they have a tall building usually they have a tall a mast or a, or a platform so that they can put the radar above the uh, surrounding buildings because it has to see uh, by by it have to send an electromagnetic uh, wave usually a microwave uh, uh, wave is generated microwave is generated and the reflectance of that microwave tell them uh, information how far is the uh, storm activity or cloud activity how dense is that activity uh, what is the direction of that uh, uh, cloud activity so they had they need to place that radar on a high building in a city environment if it is not city environment then it can be placed on the on the ground also uh, what 
what else? Uh, uh, sometimes radar are installed on aeroplanes also. Sometimes radar are installed in the naval ships also, uh, especially those which are used for the military purpose. Metrological uh, radars are placed at the place where you, we want to see uh, the activity of the clouds, activity of the storms, uh, where otherwise uh, we cannot reach. For example, uh, in, in case of Pakistan, the importance of the radar, I tell you that in case of Pakistan, our rivers are getting water from the neighboring country, uh, Rabi, Satluj, Chenab, Jhelum. So all of these, their catchment area, their <coughs> majority of the catchment area lies in the, in the uh, territory of the neighboring country, India. We don't have access of the rainfall measurement uh, by their meteorological stations. We don't have access. They don't share the live data of their rain gauges and start over there. To better forecast the floods, to better forecast the flow from the rainfall activity in their catchment, so then radar plays important role. So we have installed radar in Mangla so that we can see the catchment of Jhelum. We have installed uh, a radar in uh, Sialkot. Uh, we means Pakistan Meteorological Department. They have installed radar in Sialkot so that they can see the Chenab catchment and uh, they can uh, well predict the uh, well predict the flows by seeing the cloud activities and the movement of the clouds. And they have installed uh, there is a very old uh, radar in Lahore also. In addition to this, we have a number of, I think, uh, uh, more than 10 radars are installed uh, in Pakistan. I don't know the exact numbers at the moment. And they are still developing. They are uh, installing more and more radars in Pakistan. Through a report, we, uh, I can tell you that uh, in, in USA, they have covered most of the USA uh, through a group of about 160 radar stations which are uh, seeing the atmospheric activity in the uh, uh, upper atmosphere and from there they predict the uh, rainfall and the extent of the rainfall and the storms activity. So how does radar work? Uh, this is explained in these two slides, but uh, from this uh, slide of uh, the schematic diagram, radar uh, instrument uh, usually have an emitter it will have a kind of emitter which emits the radiation or waves, which emits the radiation or wave. And then it has a sensor uh, which, uh, which receives and store the reflected energy, reflected wave. When uh, an emission is done, when a pulse is released from the radar, it goes in the direction of that emitter, it goes in the direction of that emitter. And if there is a clear atmosphere, then the very weak signal, uh, then uh, nothing is uh, received back, nothing is reflected back. But if there is a cloud, this blue thing is, uh, is representing a cloud or a storm uh, activity over here. So it has particles inside it, uh, water droplets or hail, hail particles or snow particles in, or ice particles inside it. So some of the electromagnetic <laughs> energy will be uh, will be uh, reflected back from these uh, particles of liquid and uh, solid and that reflected energy is then then uh, stored or measured by its sensor this dish is working as a as a just a collecting media it just concentrate the uh, reflected waves towards a, a detector or sensor uh, installed at the middle so antenna or dish ka kaam sirf uh, collect karna hai from because the reflected energy is of uh, low power so they need a, a big dish so that energy can be collected and concentrated at, at the center and then it is recorded electromagnetic wave is uh, uh, moving with the speed uh, same as the speed of the light speed of the light ki jo hai, uh, about 3 into uh, 10 to the power 8 meter per second uh, that same is the electromagnetic wave energy because light is a kind of electromagnetic wave. Light, light uh, is a part of electromagnetic wave which our eye can see. There is other part of electromagnetic wave which 
we cannot see, uh, but we can sense them, we can measure them with the help of instruments. For example, our normal camera can see only the uh, electromagnetic waves within the uh, visible light range. But there are cameras which, uh, which can record the infrared light. There are cameras which can record gamma rays, the, the atomic energy people, they use it. The uh, Anmol and the Shokat Khanam, they are treating the uh, cancer patient using the gamma rays. So they can detect it, they can release gamma rays. So we have instrument, our radio, our TV, they are uh, receiving the electromagnetic waves. So uh, we should know that uh, the electromagnetic waves has a large spectrum, has a large variation of the wavelength. One part of that is the light that, that have the wave, uh, wavelength uh, from uh, 0.4 micrometer to 0.7 micrometer within this range, approximately within this range, we can see the light. I'm saying 0.4 to 0.7 a little bit variation is uh, acceptable. So 0.4 uh, micro, micrometer wavelength represents what we sense as the blue color. 0.7 or 0.69 micrometer represents what we see as the red color. In between the middle one, 0.5, 0 0.6, that represents the green color. And in between we have shades. So a very tiny, tiny length of the electromagnetic wave a very tiny span of electromagnetic wave is the light which our eyes can sense so other camera can sense other instrument can sense other wavelengths this my uh, radar releases a wavelength in the uh, the radar which is used for metrological purpose usually it use the wavelength uh, my electromagnetic wave with a wavelength one centimeter to 10 centimeter. One centimeter to 10 centimeter is the normal, uh, if I may correct it, wavelength of five to 10 centimeter is considered good for meteorological purpose. For aeroplanes, for other purposes, other wavelengths are used. So this wavelength is also called, the electromagnetic wave of this much wavelength is also called as a microwave. It is also just like we have a radio wave, like we have the, uh, what we call it, uh, TV waves, like we have the infrared rays, like we have the ultraviolet rays. So is one kind of the uh, electromagnetic waves are called as microwaves. They are in the range of micrometer size. So this, uh, and this five to 10 centimeter also comes in the same range. So five to 10 centimeter is the, uh, uh, is the wavelength of the wave generated by the radar which is used to measure the meteorological activities uh, we will study it further so electromagnetic wave is generated it strikes to uh, certain solid or liquid particles in the storm it, it comes back the speed of light is known so time between the release receiving back of the of the of the electromagnetic pulse that is noted by the electromagnetic station the computer installed over there automatically and it can tell us how far is this uh, uh, storm activity is there. And the attenuation or re the reduction in the strength of the wave, the reduction in the strength or the power of the wave is a measure of how, how big are the particles over there or how many or how dense are the particles over there. So if there are more dense or more uh, particles, the return power which is measured by this instrument radar. So that becomes reduced, uh, uh, that becomes reduced or increased. So that changes, let us say. So return power is a function of the uh, size of the particles. A D is representing the size of the particles and the size of the particle power six. So return power is increased when uh, this particle size is more uh, are more particles are there and the return power is re reduced if less particles are there. So more reflecting energy is received and if there is clear sky, no reflected energy will be received back. So this thing that the return power is affected by the amount of the particles or the dia of the particles present in the storm activity 
that help us calculate how much is the approximate rainfall occurring over there, how much is the possible rainfall over there. So that is how it works. And another new kind of radar uh, in the last few decades, uh, one or two decades, a new kind of radar have also been uh, uh, utilized and that is called as a Doppler radar. One is simpler radar, one is the Doppler radar. Doppler uh, uh, effect you might have studied in uh, study kya hoga aapne FSC mein, uh, in metric. So that is the uh, effect which you have observed or you have experienced while standing on the road. If some car is moving towards you, its voice frequency is increasing if it is moving towards you. If it is blowing its horn, its frequencies, you, you hear increasing frequency. Although you know the horn frequency is constant, but if the car is moving towards you, so its frequency seems to be higher. And if it is moving away from you, its frequency seems to be lower, reducing. So this change of frequency of a moving body, this change of frequency of the moving body, increasing frequency, if it is coming towards you, or reducing frequency, if it is moving away from you, so this effect is called as a Doppler effect. And this Doppler effect, if somebody measure the change of frequency, he can relate it to the, to the speed of the moving, moving uh, vehicle or moving body. So same concept is used by the radar. When he emits the electromagnetic waves towards the clouds, if the cloud is stationary, the same frequency is reflected back. Power is reduced, but the frequency is not changed. But if the clouds are moving towards the radar, so their frequency seems to be more than the frequency that radar had released. If uh, clouds are moving towards the radar, their frequency seems to be, and the, the radar measures the wave having higher frequency. So when he sees that I am getting the uh, higher frequency, then radar calculations or radar computer can calculate how, how much will be the speed of the, uh, of the storm system towards the radar or away from the radar. This radar, uh, so those radars which have facility of uh, measurement of the Doppler effect, what is Doppler effect? Measurement of the change of the frequency, that is the Doppler effect. So if he, he, uh, radar has the facility of measurement of the Doppler effect, it can also measure the speed of the storm moving towards the uh, towards the radar or away from the radar. And if you measure the cloud activity uh, uh, again and again in the time span, then you can see, okay, in the previous uh, image, it was uh, lo located over here. In the new image, it is located. So that is not the Doppler effect. That is why continuous imagery, you can see the movement of the, of the, of the clouds uh, on the sideways or on the, on the, uh, on the other side. But movement towards the clouds or away from the cloud or movement of the speed, wind speed within the clouds. So that can also be observed by the Doppler effect, by the Doppler radars. So those uh, new kind of radars are also being installed in Pakistan also. I think Lahore radar is Doppler radar, which can see the uh, movement of the wind also. So that is what is a, a brief uh, about how does it work. It can uh, uh, estimate the distance. The other name for the distance is range. It can measure the range of the, of the cloud activity. It can measure the return power of the electromagnetic wave, which is uh, released by the, by the radar and reflected by the clouds or uh, uh, raindrops or the snowdrops. So from the, that returned power, it can measure how much is the rainfall. It can estimate, let us say, how much is the rainfall possible at the ground at that place. There are some problems, there are some drawbacks which radar cannot handle. For example, if a high building comes in between, radar will be reflecting back you high, uh, high uh, energy back. So it should be the observer of the radar or the radar station uh, operator, he has to take care that he, he should distinguish the return power from a building and return power from a storm activity from his experience. The building location are because fixed, so he should know that from this direction I will be getting reflection. 
So to avoid the buildings, one thing is radar station is placed higher. The second thing is usually radar uh, direction is tilted up. So when radar direction is tilted up, so if you are measuring a storm activity very far away, so then you are uh, uh, then it will be in upper atmosphere because radar direction is tilted up. It is tilted to a very small degree, 0.5 to 1 degree. It is tilted up, but uh, uh, for a far lying area like 200 kilometer away, 300 kilometer away, then radar is getting the information for air parcels or the storms at a height of three to four kilometer above the ground, not on the ground. So that is one of the major drawback of the of the of the radar that it is observing the cloud or the storm in the atmosphere. So whether that atmospheric activity will be converted into the rain on the ground, that is a question which radar uh, cannot uh, answer. So uh, sometimes radar uh, is seeing a, a storm activity and at the ground there is no rainfall yet occurring over there because he is seeing very high uh, upper clouds over there. So, but in the close uh, uh, circumference, in the close radius, uh, it is seeing the cloud activities in the near to the ground atmosphere, uh, so th that will be more reliable. So that is some of the information we we wanted to convey to you. How does radar? Isko padle ek dafa. Bata diya ek radar kya hota? Radar is radio detection and ranging, uh, and it releases a pulse of electromagnetic energy. Electromagnetic energy. The, the sun is emitting electromagnetic energy. So you are familiar with this when you have studied this remote sensing part over there, they must have told you that electromagnetic energy has a spectrum. It has uh, different uh, uh, bands of the wavelength and different satellite use different bands. And one part of the electromagnetic wave is called as microwaves. So those are used by these metrological radars. And uh, similar is the concept for uh, what we call it uh, uh, ultrasound. Similar is the concept of uh, uh, what we call it uh, sonar survey. They also release uh, sound waves or electromagnetic waves, and then they uh, see the power and the time of the reflected beam. So the beam width, the pulse generates a beam. So its width and shape are determined by antenna size and configuration. So radar, different radar emits a beam of different uh, angle, one degree uh, wide beam, two degree wide beam, a half degree wide beam, 0.1 micro, uh, 0.1 degree uh, wide beam. So beam and width of the, of the uh, beam width is dependent upon the emitter. Radiated wave travel, we know the speed of the electromagnetic waves. So if we know the speed and if we measure the time of the return of the beam, the distance can be easily calculated. And uh, these waves are partially reflected by the precipitation particles and the clouds and return to the radar and is received by the antenna. Part of these waves is diffracted, scattered and absorbed. So when uh, energy beam is released, not complete energy returns back. Some some energy is scattered in the atmosphere by uh, by uh, deflecting after deflection from the uh, from the. The edu wrong was uh, not giving me any internet, so I have now I'm connected using my mobile hotspot. So hopefully you are confirmed that her 37 students are present. So OK, we continue with the radar. Uh, so uh, it can measure uh, return power and it can measure the distance or the range. And it has been seen then that the reduction in wave, the attenuation is from Kathan, the reduction in the power of the wave. Loss of the radar energy is due to passage through precipitation. So when we uh, lose the power of the, uh, of the pulse cre uh, generated by the radar, so that reduction in power, we say attenuation. 
So it has been seen that attenuation is more if there is more scattering. So if there is a larger ratio of the diameter to the wavelength of the pulse, if the ratio of diameter of the raindrops, ratio of the diameter of the raindrops to the wavelength, both are the length, so their ratio, if that is larger, it has been seen that for the same storm, we are getting more attenuation. So it means that if if we use if we use shorter wavelength, then more attenuation. If we use shorter wavelength, there will be more attenuation because the ratio of the dia of the particles of the rain to the wavelength will be large. So we cannot reduce to the shorter, shorter, shorter wavelength, although they will reach to the a larger uh, range and they will reach to the far far lying places so there is a limit because uh, as we reduce the wavelength to uh, lower wavelengths like uh, instead of using five centimeter wavelength i use one centimeter or 0.1 centimeter or less than that attenuation will be more we will be not getting the reflected energy it will uh, either pass through the uh, clouds or it will be scattered away in the atmosphere. So there's a particular uh, uh, range of this uh, ratio, which is suitable for meteorological uh, radars. So the far, uh, far, far short wavelength, total energy, so that message I have conveyed, that if uh, wavelength is reduced, uh, the energy received back will be, uh, will be less than the detectable. So uh, it has been seen that the lightest precipitation intensity will seriously attenuate. Attenuate means reduce. It will seriously attenuate radar energy if the Excuse wavelength is less than one yes. centimeter. Sir, have you shared the slide or not? Before it was done, now it was done again. Before it was done, now it was done again. Sir, there are no slides. Okay, sir. अब आ गया स्क्रीन मेरी स्क्रीन आ गई है यस ओके थैंक यू सो ओवर हियर द मैसेज बीइंग कन्वेड टू यू इज दैट वी कैन नॉट यूज एनी वेवलेंथ देयर इज देयर इज अ पर्टिकुलर रेंज ऑफ द वेवलेंथ ऑफ द इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक वेव्स व्हिच इज सूटेबल फॉर मेट्रोलॉजिकल ऑब्जर्वेशन व्हाट इज द पैरामीटर व्हिच कंट्रोल इट्स इट्स द रेशियो ऑफ द डाया ऑफ द रेन पार्टिकल्स और आइस पार्टिकल्स टू द Uh, wavelength of the electromagnetic waves. Higher this ratio, more energy will be lost, attenuate, we will not getting the reflected energy. So if there is a, a wavelength is less than one centimeter, if like we have selected a radar, maybe this is good for detecting very far lying uh, aeroplanes. Maybe military people are using it. But for meteorological purpose, if we are using a radar having a wavelength less than a centimeter, then uh, serious attenuation and uh, we are not getting much information out of the image of the radar. But if somebody is interested in measuring very small droplets of the rain, then maybe they will be going for a special radar having this much wavelength. But in normal condition, wavelength less than five centimeter are considered unsuitable for precipitation measurement. Okay, so smaller uh, can smaller wavelength can give satisfactory estimation for light precipitation. If somebody is interested in in uh, drizzling or very small rain rains rainfall, so then he will be having a special radar having less wavelength. So wavelength of 5 to 10 centimeters are usually used and the beam width generated is 2 degree. When we, when, we emit a, when we emit a wave, so its uh, size or uh, its width is uh, represented by the angle of that wave at which it will spread, angle at which it will spread. So, so angle is fixed, so the this, uh, width being covered is dependent on how far we are seeing. So, two degree. If it, we go to uh, 200 kilometer away from the radar, two degree, maybe may uh, a few kilometers. 
and if we come close to radar, you see so the uh, radar is within the range. Uh, some radars are estimating the the rain in a qualitative manner. So it 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 is expected that heavy rainfall is there. So that is a qualitative forecasting. Some radars are giving us the quantitative precipitation measurement. So such radars which are giving us the quantitative precipitation measurement, we call them as QPM radar, quantitative precipitation uh, measurement radar. So uh, recently uh, they have installed a radar in uh, Sialkot, uh, and that is a QPM radar. And here and its wavelength is 5.3 centimeters. Uh, so a new radar is installed at Sialkot. So its wavelength is 5.3 centimeters. So here are the a few images of the radar which they are storing and they are putting it on the website for the information of the of the public. Uh, one is from Islam. One is from Lahore Station radar at Lahore. This black line is the boundary of Pakistan. Lahore over here. And it can uh, see across the border. It can see the cloud activity close to the uh, this area, and this is close to Sialkot and uh, other part of uh, 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 other side of Pakistan border. So it can see uh, activities, and this uh, radar can prepare different kind of images. In one image, they can show the reflected energy. In image, they can uh, change that reflected energy into another in, in, into another parameter they call reflectivity. So it depends which kind of image you are seeing. Sometimes they represents, if it is a Doppler radar, they represents, represents the velocity uh, at a certain place. And so they are representing in the image. So in this image, I think they have uh, 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 they are showing not the reflectance, but they are showing uh, how much is the rainfall. They have calculated the rainfall from the reflected energy, and then they have put it on the image. And the shade of the of the cell, color shade in the cell. Uh, here, here, the green is the background, and uh, the, that represents uh, the lo local. Uh, but over its uh, sign, sign, cyan color, this blue color, this uh, uh, this green, green, yellow, and orange, and red, and pink. So they are representing different amount of the rainfall from uh, 5.5 millimeter, I think, to 51 millimeter. So uh, different places uh, they are expecting or they are estimating that different rainfall is expected at that place at the moment. How they have done it? Radar, radar is rotating uh, continuously uh, about its pivotal, pivotal axis. So on each direction, it uh, emits the pulse and it uh, stores the reflected energy. Then from the next, from the next, from the next. So this is not image from the uh, one direction image of the of the radar. Rather, they are uh, uh, they are continuously getting the images and they are mosaicing them together. So this is a mosaic image of the radar uh, uh, measurements, and uh, they are preparing it automatically using the computer program. So, so this one is the radar station at Mangla. So Mangla uh, is uh, just at the border of Pakistan and uh, Azad Kashmir, and the huge catchment of the Mangla lies in India, in occupied Kashmir and in, in India. So uh, to get the idea about uh, the rain activity or the storm activity in India, like this is Sirinagar over here, and uh, there are some cloud activity they are observing over here. So such kind of information can be obtained from the radar at the border, near to the border. We have a radar at D.I. Khan over here to look into the uh, catchment uh, on the western side of Pakistan. We have radar in, uh, I think, Koha, Koita also. We have radar in Karachi also and other places also. Tarbela is also getting, I think, a radar. So uh, this one is the image I have taken from the Pakistan Met Department website. And here it is a stationary image. While on the, on the website, if you go there, I have put the website uh, link over here, uh, Pakistan Meteorological Department, PMD. Uh, if you go to the Islamabad station, they can give you the imagery over a certain day's time period. 
So when you play, you will be getting a moving uh, uh, kind of file you will be getting that can show you even the movement of the cloud also. And the color coding of the clouds are the uh, uh, color coding shown over here is can be interpreted easily by the legend given along with the image. So for example, over here, the light blue color or cyan color shows a, a rainfall about one millimeter, while the yellow is representing rainfall 300 millimeter or something uh, per day, I think. So th that is how the radars work and how the radar uh, images can be interpreted using the legends available with the one oh, station may be using one kind of legend other station can use another kind of legion. So the important parameters uh, which uh, are observed, uh, I have told you, are return power, they may uh, And then return power uh, can be used to uh, calculate the reflectivity of the, of the hydrometeors. Hydrometeors are the uh, water particles, are the snow particles, are the ice crystals, so hydrometeors. So reflectivity of a group of hydrometeor depends on various factors. How much reflection will be coming back depends mainly on these factors. One is size of the particle. Second is number of particles, how dense they are. Um, if there is a, a very small number of particles, less reflectivity will be there. If a high, high number of particles, uh, more water is there, so more reflectivity. So physical state, whether it is solid or liquid, that change the reflectivity. Shape of the shape of the individual elements, whether they are solids, again shape will change, or whether they are liquid. So they are also sometimes radar also observe in case of uh, heavy uh, cyclones or tornado. If some uh, solid particles are picked by the uh, uh, by the tornado. So their reflectivity is quite different from the reflectivity which will come from the rain or the, or the ice. So solid particles, if they are going up in the uh, atmosphere because of the heavy tornado or cyclone activity, sometimes they are lifted up because of the low pressure in the, in the central part of the cyclones. So some solid particles are lifted up. So sometimes radar can see those particles also and so the shape of the particles also affect the reflectivity. So once uh, the return power is with this, that can be related that it is uh, uh, from the experiments they have seen that it is function of the range. So uh, uh, far away is the activity, less will be the power uh, uh, received and the total number of particles and their diameters. So sum of the diameter power six, so the re uh, return power is function of that. And C is a coefficient which depends upon which kind of equipment is placed over there, beam, beam angle, beam width, beam energy released over there. And the, it is the uh, characteristics of the radar. So C is a coefficient which is a function dependent upon the radar characteristics, which wavelength it is using, what is the shape and the width of the beam. So C is coefficient for a certain radar and changes from one radar to other radar. So the physical parameter on which uh, the return power is dependent on meteorological parameter. One thing is the distance, how far it is away, and its power uh, two. Uh, if it's, if something is uh, uh, twice the distance away, so return power will be uh, reduced by four times. If it is twice the distance away, if uh, one storm is one kilometer away, another storm is two kilometer away, if all other parameters are same, the two kilometer away will be giving us return power four times smaller than the uh, storm which is one kilometer away uh, or if i say oh, the first storm was at two kilometer other was at uh, four kilometer so uh, square uh, is the relationship power two is the relationship between the return power and the distance this uh, uh, summation of d6 is sometimes inflectively it is said as z reflective so they use the uh, uh, another uh, so this is return power z is called as a reflectivity which is uh, uh, direct measurement uh, uh, of how many number of particles are there and this can be related with the amount of the rain if the amount of the rainfall or the rainfall rate rainfall rate is represented by capital r 
rainfall rate is represented. So this reflectivity is related to rainfall with a power function. We say this is a power function. Uh, the reflectivity is equal to a coefficient time rainfall power B. Both A and B are coefficients which uh, we can find using the calibration. What does we mean by calibration? If we, you have installed a new radar at a certain place and for a certain storm, you have uh, calculated how much is the reflectivity in a certain a cell of, the, of the, that area, in a certain pixel of that area, so much is the reflectivity. If, if you have the uh, facility of the rainfall measurement uh, under, under that storm also, the local rain gauge is available. So using that rain information and using that reflectivity, we can uh, estimate what is the good value of A and B, what is the good value of these calibration coefficients. So once we have found calibration coefficient by observed data at that place and observed reflectivity, and later on this A and B can be used to estimate rainfall if only reflectivity is with us in this universe. Got it. So this ZR relationship, sometimes we call ZR relationship, sometimes we call as a power function. So that is established for each radar. So uh, once you go to the radar, uh, ask them what are the calibration coefficient or what are the power, power uh, coefficient in the ZR equation. So if that you, and uh, uh, in, the, uh, uh, in the radar image, you know that what is the reflectivity, you can convert it into the rainfall using this A and B. R will be equal to Z divided by A power 1 over B. And if we replace Z uh, with the, uh, with from here, if I replace uh, uh, Z uh, from here, so I'll find what will be equations can be used to write the rainfall formula in this way. So R is equal to to return power divided by coefficient of that radar, which is dependent upon the wavelength of the of the electromagnetic wave and the angle of the uh, and the angle uh, of the of, and the width of the uh, into range or uh, distance square divided by calibration coefficient a whole power one over b. So we get it. So basic parameter which is measured by the radar is return power and so measured from the time of the return of the wave. So these two things, range and return power, help us find the rainfall. So to, uh, we need to calibrate each radar after after location at a certain place. And once A and B are known to us, uh, people start seeing the rainfall from the radar. Usually this A value changes uh, varies from different radar to different radar. It varies from 15 to 1100, and B varies from 1.2 to 3.2. And uh, more, so average value is for uh, for A is 20 value. So it change, it varies from uh, location to location, radar to radar. So this should be uh, calibrated at the local place. So this uh, we call as a power function that is equal to A into R power 6. This is a relationship which relates the reflectivity. This summation of D6 can be called as reflectivity uh, and return power. Reflectivity and return power are related over here. So any question in this uh, slide? I will move ahead. So mathematical equations are there. Uh, people have seen that distance and the number of uh, particles and the size of the particles affect the reflectivity in addition to the instrument in, instruments uh, uh, parameter instrument characteristics so if reflection is known to us it can be converted into reflectivity and that can be converted into the rainfall so this same equation can be rewritten in this form also r is equal to pr over c so if somebody tells you the range if somebody tells you the reflection uh, for, uh, reflected power, you should be able to estimate rain knowing A, B, and C. So main obstacle, uh, in case of radar, there are some problems I have already mentioned. It measures the rainfall in atmosphere while gauges measure in the ground. So don't try to 
uh, expect don't expect that same value will be coming from both because sometimes the clouds are not turned into the rainfall at the ground they evaporate back so that should be known to us in order to avoid interference usually we keep the beam at a certain uh, upward angle 0.5 to 1 degree that causes problem that uh, at a very far lying places for example at 200 km if angle was 1 degree it means radar is observing 3 and 1/2 km above the ground so that is a huge distance with respect to atmospheric activities so it's a 3500 meter and uh, then about uh, about uh, uh, 10000 feet above the ground so um, it might uh, uh, that activity might change into the rainfall it might uh, move away from that place so calibration is required and can, uh, can also cause error movement of the cloud if it is moving towards the reflectivity can enhance and that can also so these are some of the problems uh, that is uh, background which we wanted to convey to you so have few minutes break or uh, we can continue and we can leave early uh, we go ahead few slides up there in a set so i think so continue kar le sir but i think continue kar le continue kar le so bad network ke mujhe ho aa rahi hai recording has started this is what else okay we continue it so my towards uh, satellite measurement i would like ke aap ek kya a video dekh le if it is uh, available uh, i am not sure if you get the voice so agar voice nahi aa rahi so you should search on the youtube this video global precipitation mission gpm Uh, please listen it. it it is quite informative they tell us what is the benefit of the rainfall measurement using satellites in the beginning they will tell you that uh, if we measure the rain gauge uh, uh, precipitation using rain gauges they are covering very small area around the globe although they are distributed but theoretically they are covering two uh, or four uh, basketball courts area so from there we are estimating the rain of the whole globe so uh, it has a uh, theoretical drawback so satellite gives us a good idea about the extent of the rainfall extent of the cloud so that's why people are spending money on the meteorological satellites so that they can forecast the rainfall in a better in a uh timely manner and even they can forecast the rain well also so i think it, it uh, maybe you are getting wise maybe you are yeah can you see uh ye jo video abhi chali hai iski awaaz aa rahi thi aapko nahi chali abhi tak lagta hai aapko
So uh, that was a brief video about uh, a project. They call it GPM, Global Precipitation Mission. And uh, this was launched as a, uh, as a following uh, mission. Previous to that, in 97, there was a mission, they call it uh, Tropical Rain Monitoring Mission, TRMM. So uh, that was quite successful to uh, measure the rainfall in the tropical regions. And then they uh, replaced those uh, satellites, old satellites, and now they have a set of nine satellites which are uh, uh, estimating the global precipitation. So it's a uh, uh, consortium of uh, uh, different countries, in, including USA, Japan, and other countries. And uh, uh, its importance is quite uh, visible that uh, continuous observation of the globe they tell them uh, where are the clouds in which direction they are moving how uh, how bright or how light they are and from there uh, what is the height of the clouds uh, and from these parameters they can estimate how much is the expected rainfall at that place still there is a variation between the ground based observation and the uh, estimates given by the satellites but at certain place where you don't have the access to the ground-based rain gauges, then these are the only source of the uh, precipitation estimate. For example, in uh, oceans where you don't have uh, uh, a good density of the rain gauges over there, it can help you. For example, in case of Pakistan, if we don't get the information of the rainfall in India, in the catchments which are not in our control, so then satellite can uh, give us some idea that so much rainfall is expected and we can make it better with the with the uh, good calibration with the ground based data so uh, that is the background of the satellites and their importance and uh, why we should be using them and uh, there's such still need of further research in this uh, uh, in this field uh, one of the recent phd done in this, in uh, center of excellence by one of the teacher of the Center of Excellence, Dr. Masood, uh, he has carried out the uh, 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 performance of satellite-based rainfall measurements. Uh, there are different sources of the satellite-based rainfall. For example, one is GPM. There are other sources of the rainfall measurement also. And then sometimes there are the uh, uh, satellite, uh, uh, there are the estimation of the rainfall from a group of of uh, different satellites and they take the average or uh, uh, combined product are also released as a rainfall measurement. So uh, he has done a PhD on this work that which product is better predicting the rainfall in Pakistani area and uh, which is, uh, if you have the choice, which one you should be using. So there is still uh, uh, room for further research in this area and you should also uh, go into it. So how do they work? I will uh, briefly uh, state it over here. Uh, studies of the water balance at a global scale is important uh, that we know. Satellite do not measure the precipitation directly, note it. Precipitation is directly measured by rain gauges at the ground. Make it clear. The radar, they are also observing how many number of particles are there or how much, how, how thick or how extent, extensive is the cloud in the atmosphere, they are also not directly measuring the rainfall at the ground. So uh, both of them are, uh, uh, they are seeing the clouds and uh, from there they are uh, converting into the estimate of the rainfall. So satellites, they estimate precipitation using these two uh, uh, bands of the electromagnetic waves. Some satellites, they, they only use the visible range of the electromagnetic wave. Uh, so their product will be, uh, uh, will be similar to the picture which we see with our naked eyes. So visible bands, visible bands are blue, red, uh, green. Uh, these are the visible band electromagnetic waves. And some satellites, they use infrared band. So both have different capabilities. For example, if uh, a satellite is using a band in the visible uh, range of the, of the electromagnetic wave, they can see the cloud type. They can see the type of the cloud, 
how much is the area of the cloud and how if it is growing or if it is reducing what is the growth rate of the of the of the cloud and those satellites which use infrared band infrared or our naked eye cannot see but sensors can see infrared so they can tell us uh, what is the temperature of the cloud or what is the range or elevation of the cloud also so and they can also see the growth or the reduction of the cloud also so if uh, they have the information how tall is the storm activity how much is the thickness or how tall is the storm activity usually more taller the cloud structure is there more rainfall or more water vapors are there more rainfall is expected so tall and dense clouds produce heavy precipitation it has been seen so once uh, uh, they see that the cloud top is very high and uh, uh, there is a thick cloud available over there so then they can uh, predict that uh, more rainfall is expected at this place so some radar have recent uh, uh, not radars recent satellites they also use microwave uh, 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 radiometry microwave uh, uh, sensors are also attached to them which can look into the structure of the particles also uh, uh, how dense are the particles uh, what is the shape of the particles it is like the uh, x ray or ultrasound of something so they can see the structure of the clouds also and they can uh, also inform more uh, parameters about the precipitation activity over there uh, a major problem in the satellite based technique is they do not reveal precipitation producing clouds because of overlying clouds because the satellite are observing from 400 500 800 or sometimes uh, even higher uh, altitudes so they are only seeing if it is using the if it is using the <coughs> visible band of the of the electromagnetic wave visible light cannot penetrate through the cloud so the image they will be producing will be image of the uppermost cloud layers they cannot see through the cloud visible band similar is infrared cannot pass through the cloud so if some satellite don't have the microwave uh, band available to it which can penetrate through the cloud microwave is uh, can penetrate through the cloud so they cannot see the whole cloud itself so most of the time they are seeing upper altitude and uh, they are seeing the movement of the cloud they are seeing the extent of the cloud and from this information they infer the extent that how this much precipitation is expected that's why most of the time uh, it does not uh, uh, match with the ground based rainfall prediction in a good way uh, they have to rely it in on other methods like radar and they have to rely on the rain gauges measurement also in that area uh, this approach is most suitable in measurement of precipitation over oceans and in remote areas this is helpful in monitoring the track of the cyclones so uh, yesterday i have seen this video uh, this is about 30 mi minutes uh, uh, link how to read weather weather radar this is this is much more uh, uh, interesting for those who want to interpret the radar imagery uh, that if uh, this kind of uh, pattern is there in the radar imagery this can be possible so those who are interested in more in meteorological activity should go into this video otherwise whatever we have informed to you and uh, whatever is available in the book of the linsley and uh, ventichau uh, handbook of hydrology by ventichau uh, that is what is sufficient for hydrologist and civil engineers how radar works to estimate the rainfall how satellites help in estimating the extent of the rainfall or the height of the clouds and the thickness of the cloud or the color of the cloud that can be converted into the uh rainfall uh, estimate at a certain place so this conclude today lecture if you have any questions you are welcome uh a few pages are there in uh, handbook of hydrology book by maidment by maidment handbook of hydrology by maidment if somebody is interested in uh, radar and uh, satellite based this rainfall measurements so few pages are there in the book of a uh, maidment book of the handbook of hydrology by maidment this may third chapter mein, handbook of hydrology by maidment third chapter if i go to page 60 or 70
So this specify rain gauges, density. So here is about the radar, electromagnetic waves, the USA radar system, next rad, one of the image of the radar. This is a similar equation as the power uh, equation for the uh, radar measurement. So Z is the reflectivity, R is the range. Uh, a, a particular radar parameters are given over here. So this is the power law which we have informed to you. We use it in other way. We use Z is equal to A into R power B. So uh, this, this shape is also fine. That shape is also fine. Only A and B will be inverse of each other over there. So Z are relationship. So rainfall is a function of reflectivity power B over here. So power lies there. So we, we, have, we have told you uh, uh, that A is about uh, uh, 200. So over here A is inverse of that one. So satellite measurements, a few paragraphs are there and how. So that is the background and the, these slides and the YouTube videos will enhance your knowledge about uh, measurement of the rainfall using the latest technology which are still under development. So if any questions, you are welcome. I take the attendance. Sir, you slides be send kar dijiye ga. Kyu nahi hai aapke paas pehle jaa. Slides me sare. Lecture five to ka apne kiye thi send. Slides to me sare nahi de chuka. Hai bhi. Slide me sare nahi de chuka. No sir, sir, lecture 5 ke baad wali aapne ye jo aaj wali hai ye nahi send ki abhi tak. Okay. Ye main bhej raha hu. Ye 55 MB ki hai with the video. So video aap wahan se le from the YouTube aur ye do lecture mein aapko bhej raha hu without video. Without video it is less than 1 MB. So ye main bhej raha hu. Sir, you book me kindly, Sir, you book me kindly, Sir, you book me kindly, Sir, Sir, book me Sir, Sir, जो आप पढ़ाते हैं वो लिंसले वाली बुक में तो बहुत कम होता है उसमें से बुक में बहुत कम होता है तो मैं क्या करूं मसलन क्या पूछना चाहते हैं सर मैं कह रहा हूं मतलब जो आप चीजें पढ़ाते हैं स्लाइड्स में होती है ना वो लिंसले वाली उस बुक में से बहुत कम उसकी डिटेल होती है ठीक है नो प्रॉब्लम दैट बट Slide share नहीं किया क्या हुआ अच्छा मैं पहले इसका size देख लूँ measurement का show in the वो कहाँ होता है open file location it is over here this is 50 MB अगर कहते हो तो ना डाल दे वरना radar के जो दो तीन pages हैं ये मैं डाल देता हूँ 3.7.3 ठीक है बताओ 50 MB रिसीव कर लोगे या नहीं यस सर कर लेंगे 50 MB वाली बोलो जी सर कर लेंगे कर लेंगे और स्पेशली ली जब मैं हार्ड स्पॉट यूज़ कर रहा हूँ 
let us go towards में अभी भी नेट नहीं आ रहा तो हॉटस्पॉट पे भी जाना मुश्किल हो जाएगी मैंने डाल दी है अगर पहुंच जाए तो ठीक है वरना फिर बता देना मैं पेजेस भेज दूँ ओके और अटेंडेंस मैंने डाउनलोड कर ली थी लेट अस पुट इट ऑन द ऑन द डाउनलोड मीटिंग अटेंडेंस फर्स्ट फेब्रुअरी ये आपकी अटेंडेंस आ गई है ये व्हाट्सएप आ गया आज के अटेंडेंस सी आर प्लीज इसको रिकॉर्ड कर लेना ओके सर